What's up guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we got a fun project. I'm gonna be making a line boring bar. Now, I've been really excited to jump into line boring and give it a shot. And we're not really doing line boring here. We're gonna use this in the horizontal boring or a horizontal mill, um, but we're gonna set it up like a line boring bar. And I wanna make it as a line boring bar so that way when I do some line boring, I have a bar. So this is the material we're gonna be using. It is an unknown material. Um, I think it's at least cold rolled or better. It is polished and ground and I've had it on the shelf. Um, did a quite a bit of research on what would be the best material. 4140 would probably be the best, um, but I opted just to use what I have. Based on what I'm seeing online, uh, the rigidity is really not uh, as big of an issue as long as it's fully supported. Um, because even steels that are stiffer um, or harder aren't necessarily more rigid. At least that's what some people are saying. So um, we're gonna roll with this material and give it a shot. I'm sure I'll be making a bunch more of these and we can mess around with the steel uh, if we need to. So we got the bar. I went ahead and got myself a brand new square brooch. I am terrified about this thing. Um, 300 bucks and I don't want to drop it and I don't want to break it and I've never used a square brooch before so this will be fun and I got myself you know a brand new Klee line 732nd 1732nd drill bit stubby um, so let's get to work and get this guy made over here at the American we're just going to get this bar set up the first step is going to be to turn and face this bar. All right, we got the material chucked up in the lathe. I'm using the newly refurbished chuck. It is a Buck Setru chuck, and I just put some brand new Bison 12 inch jaws on it. And then we got the faces tapped for our copper soft jaws. And I'm using the soft jaw just to kind of minimize the scratching. It's really not that important. All right, get it nice and tight. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this faced off. This is inch and a half material, if I didn't mention that. We're running at 1,000 RPMs, maxing out this lathe. And we'll face this off. Pretty easy operation over here. This doesn't even need to be faced off. We're just doing it make it look clean, that's all. We'll throw a chamfer on it. Just something nice and heavy, that's how we like it. Just like that, good enough. I might center drill it, we're gonna center drill it just because in case I need to service it, why not? All right, we're gonna flip this guy around. All right, we'll go ahead and face this end as well. Touch off, and then we'll face this bad boy. I really like these inserts here. They give a nice finish, they're pretty durable. Back it out. Go ahead and drop on a chamfer. Nice heavy chamfer. And then we'll go ahead and just clean it up with the file. All 
All right, we're good. All right, we're over here at the bench. We got our shaft laid out. We're gonna go ahead and mark every four inches. This does not need to be that precise. Four, eight, 12, and 44. We'll take it over the mill and get it drilled out. All right, we got this bar up in the mill. We got everything clamped down tight. Went ahead and found the center with the center finder, and we're gonna go ahead and put the holes on center all the way down the bar in four inch increments. So I'll go ahead and get the, uh, the drill swapped out and go from there. We're gonna be using a spotting drill, kind of get the hole started. All right, let's go ahead and get this guy spot drilled. And then we'll switch over to the bigger drill. All right, we're gonna run this. We're gonna run it in low speed. A little bit of fluid. I could have went with a pilot hole, but I think we'll be fine. Sharp drill bit does the trick. Nice stubby drill bit, nice and rigid. Got a machinist jack supporting me over here on the edge. There she is. Now there's a number of ways to do this so that you can keep the holes square and consistent. I've went ahead and made one of these in the past, and this is designed to come over the shaft or whatever you're cutting and to keep it square. Because when you loosen it in the vise and you go to move it, it's gonna wanna move off square. Now you can use a level, you can do a variety of things, but this is just the method I'm gonna use. I'm gonna place this over here by the hole Tighten it up with a adjustable wrench. And I'm gonna use a square over here off of the bed. Make sure that there's no chips in the way. And I'm gonna square this up like that. And I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna tighten this. And I got a nice brass or copper shim in there. All right, so now when I loosen my part, I'm gonna slide it down to make the cut. Now what I can do is I can come over here and I can square this up and tighten it back down. And of course, we're gonna to need to add our machinist jacks back under there that fell, but you get the idea there. All right, we're gonna drill our second hole. Get some lubrication over here. All right, guys, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. We're gonna go ahead and broach each of these holes. I have some C-channel set up. I think it's actually Unistrut with some supports. This will allow the, the rod to stay in here without drifting side to side. I went ahead and put a flat uh, piece in the bottom here because I have a hole in here. Um, so I think we're ready to go. Hopefully this goes smooth. There's no reason it shouldn't, but haven't ever done it before. Let's get the brooch in there. Looks like we are uh, roughly square. Let's get it lubricated. And we're using our six ton slash 12 ton compound hydraulic or compound harbor press. All right, let's get it going. I wanna make sure we're square. Looks like we might be off a little bit. Let me just make that adjustment. Hopefully we haven't started too much. 
Hmm. Maybe we have. All right. I'm going to knock it out and uh, try to reposition it. All right, guys. I got you pulled in close. So I went ahead and squared this up. And we'll go ahead and get to doing it. My initial impression is it's a lot easier than I expected. And I'm going to release every little bit and just try to make sure I'm square. And I think I am. Maybe it's because I'm using a 12 ton press in the compound mode. So far it appears to be going well. I'm taking it slow on the first one. Okay, one to flex there. Or it looks like it's hit a spot where it doesn't want to go anymore. Huh. So it was just easy initially. There we go. Our C channel is kind of buckling here. All right, we're repositioned here. I got rid of our C channel. Didn't have enough rigidity. And I don't have anything keeping this from moving around, but we're gonna give it a shot and see how it works. I see the brooch bowing, so I don't love that. Try to position it more in the center. All right, we're back. We got a different setup. I went ahead and made a plate with two channel iron or angle iron uh, fixed there, welded on both sides, and then we put a one inch hole through the whole thing and then we clamped it down. So hopefully side to side uh, won't matter and it's just gonna be aligning this square and since we have a V bottom, as long as the brooch is in the same position on here, should be square every time. So let's give this a shot, re-lube it up, and see if we can get this done without breaking this brooch. See if it works better. I don't see the brooch bowing as much. So that's good. I think I like what I'm seeing. It takes a lot of effort to run this brooch, I'm just telling you. It's under a lot of tension, but we're going to keep going. Yeah, I mean, we're going square, so I think we're good. I think it's working well. Perfect. Very happy with that. I don't think we're going to break it so far. Let me get you in a little closer. There we go. It's one hole done. Felt a lot better about that. Wow, that is a nice square hole. I don't think it's 100% square, but it is like 92. So I think we're gonna roll with it. Very nice. Check our tool holder, make sure it fits. All right, this is a tool holder we're gonna be using. Oh, look at that. Look at that, that's a nice fit. A little bit of play, not sure if it's because of the fact that that's Chinese. Let me try. I've got a piece of high speed steel. Let's see how that is. Yeah, it's definitely a tighter fit. That's probably because that's Chinese. All right, cool.
All right, guys, we successfully got that boring bar broached. Before we move on, I just want to talk about this setup because I learned something over here and it might help you guys out too. So I was trying to broach this before uh, the bar without some sort of support or the support I was using wasn't sufficient. And I was getting a lot of flex in the broach, which I didn't like. Um, I just went over to the bench and welded this up. This is just two pieces of angle iron, quarter inch wall. And then I welded the base here. And then I took it over to the radial arm drill and put an inch through bore through here. So there's plenty of room for the brooch to drop through. Once I did that, I clamped this down. And what that does is that limits the side to side movement. Um, and that really helped me out because once I figured out what square was for the brooch, I could actually mark it on the underside of this. And once I got this clocked right, it was the same for every one. So I did double check it by bending down and taking a look at it, but this really saved me because it kept the brooch square and it kept the bar from moving and it really, really helped out. Um, the broaching on the first one was a little hairy. It was the first time I've done it. Um, but then after that, when I got this set up in place and got it lubricated, uh, worked very smooth. The key, what I found with the square brooch um, is to make sure it gets started properly. Um, I actually used a straight edge on the top of the brooch and measured to the back of the arbor press to make sure it was square. And then once you get it going, um, I take the pressure off and double check, make sure it doesn't bounce back and then just uh, go ahead and finish the brooch and everything worked perfectly. So uh, kind of in summary, if you do it wrong, it's kind of a pain, but when you do it right, nice and smooth, like a lot of things. So if any of you guys are doing any broaching at home or in your shop, that, uh, that's a good tip, at least for the square brooch, um, because it doesn't have a guide, uh, like when you're doing a keyway. The other thing is this press is a six and 12 ton compound and going through that inch and a half bar, uh, this was doing it, no problem but I don't know if I'd want to run like a three quarter or a one inch brooch through that same bar. So, you know, I don't know how big of an arbor press you need for those larger brooches or if you just go to a hydraulic press, but uh, this was perfect for what we did, but I don't know how much bigger I would do and feel comfortable. All right, we're over here at the mill for the last operation, which is gonna to be to drill all the holes and then go ahead and tap for the 3 8 24 set screw. Just a couple things I want to discuss while I'm over here. First, these plates were an idea I seen from Josh Topper over at Topper Machine. Great idea. I was messing around with doing machinist jacks and that works. There's nothing wrong with that. But this is much more efficient, um, especially if you're going to be moving things around. I kept finding that the machinist jacks would fall as I slid the bar. So what I did is off camera, I went ahead and welded up some angle plate. I fly cut the back side and then I got it uh, stoned and I stoned the table, bolted it down on both sides. And then I took the end mill and I touched the top of the vise and brought it up slightly so that I wasn't ruining the vise bed and then machined both sides and then used an indicator to sweep the vise and these two sides. And I got the sides within like a thousandth of the vise. They were a thousandths high. And then I came in and milled these down so that they were about a thousandths lower than the vise. Um, I know that when I'm putting downward pressure, they're gonna deflect anyway, but they're really close and I didn't want them higher. Um, I wanna make sure my main contact point is the vise. So this is really nice because as I slide the bar along, I have a bigger uh, contact point. So if I wanna draw on the edge, I've got support right there. Same thing on this edge, and I can slide these down the table um, so that way, if I want to work down the table, I don't have to mess around with machinist jacks. So I really like this idea. It took me a little bit to make these, but I know that I'll use them in the future. So we're going to get these holes drilled. I got this drill on center line. It's a number Q drill. And then we'll go ahead and uh, get these holes tapped. I'm not going to spot drill these. I don't think it's that big of a deal. We're through. Uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and tap this while I have everything in position. I got a brand new tap here, spiral tap, so it's the right tap for this. It ejects the chips up and away, and I'll just lock my X and Y axis, get it in the chuck, and we'll get it power tapped. Get it lubed up. It might slip, I'm not too worried about it. There we go, that worked perfectly. Absolutely perfect. The hole is beautiful. A little test fit of the screw. If I can get it started. Ideally, I would countersink that, but because we're in a round bar, not ideal. There we go. Perfect. Happy with that. It's a nice tight hole. Fine thread so we can get lots of torque on the tool. For this application, I think I went with three quarter inch screws. Yeah, so a half inch may have been better. Our set screw is going to stick up a little bit. I think that's going to be fine. If we were doing a real tight bore, that would be a problem, but this will be fine for this. Nice and rigid. I like it. Oh, yeah. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. All right, let's get this other hole drilled. Get you a little close up shot of us tapping this. Well guys, we got the boring bar complete. I'm super happy. Nice 48 inch bar. We got our square holes broached and our 3 8 24 set screws done. We also went ahead and put a flat on both sides. I did that so that way when I put this bar in the KNT mill and I install it into the one and a half inch tool holder, I have a spot for the set screws to grab. Overall, I'm really happy with this. Uh, we're just going to have to see how it performs. If you stick around for the next video, you'll see this thing in action. Uh, and we're going to be repairing a rack over there for the Arbor Press and then also a little two, uh, paw tooth um, for gripping onto a gear. And we'll be using this guy. So stay tuned for that video and we will see you in the next one.